The Philadelphia 76ers have been probably one of the hardest franchises to be a fan of for years. And I am not a fan of the 76ers. I am not from there. I don't root for them. But from an outsider's perspective looking in, my God, must it be a frustrating experience. I mean, from a four-year stretch where the team went 75 and 253 to them making the playoffs for seven years straight now and not getting past the second round even one time. And on top of that, in the midst of that seven-year uh, stretch of making the playoffs, they suffered one of the worst game-winning buzzer beaters of all time in the playoffs from the Kawhi Leonard Toronto Raptors one. I'm sure not a lot of you want to rethink about it, but you are going to have to. And then from having very promising regular seasons just for Joel Embiid to get hurt at the end and them not no longer having the talent to make a deep playoff run, despite if they were fully healthy, being able to legitimately be finals contenders every year for a while now. So it has got to be so frustrating so even when you're not in the bottom of the league anymore and even when you're considered one of the top teams in the league for a pretty long period of time it just seems like something has to go wrong they can't get it right it's just got to be so disappointing and so disheartening to be a Philadelphia 76ers fan at least a lot of the time. But in this video, I'm going to be saying why. I personally think that right now is going to be one of their best opportunities they've had in a very, very long time to actually become an elite team and legit get over the hump, finally make it to the finals, and maybe even win it. And if it, they don't do it now, I'm not sure they're ever going to do it with this core of a team they have together because I think this is by far their best opportunity and really only one major obstacle stands in front of them that I'm going to be getting to a little bit later on in this video. So first things first, let's really just break down what this roster is going to look like going into next season and why I am so high on it. The biggest reason is because for the first time in a very long time, I think they have a legit big three. Now, yes, don't get me wrong. They've had Embiid, Maxi, Harden. Uh, they've had different variations of big threes in the past, but I think right now with how this team is currently constructed, this is probably the best big three they've ever had as they ha are going to go into the NBA next year with a big three that looks like Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, and Paul George. Now, the reason I like this so much is because it's not just a talent heavy big three. Like a lot of teams can get a lot of talent on their roster, but the talent doesn't really complement each other and doesn't really work together. And I just don't think that is the case with this big three as with they all three play very different positions. Obviously, Maxey at point guard, Paul George at forward, and Joel Embiid at the big man position as a center. But they're all going to complement each other very well because although yes Paul George is a great shooter and he can do all those things and he's a good two-way player Tyrese Max is going to be the guy bringing the ball up the floor and they're really not going to be taking the ball out of each other's hands because Paul George doesn't take the ball up the floor and B doesn't take the ball up the floor so it's not going to interrupt with Maxi in any way Maxi is although a great scorer he's also a very solid passer so with Paul George's shooting ability and being able to self-create he can be kind of the second option offensively at least not bringing the ball up the floor type deal and then Joel Embiid can just be the guy that's not going to get his space inf infiltrated at all either because they all score in such different ways and they all use the ball and move the ball in different ways that they should all really complement each other and not step on each other's feet while the year goes on and as they get chemistry together and as they get games and as they get experience together they should only play better and better and better and that is so important for a complementary big three because once they get to a point to where they can really play together at a very high level it is going to be very hard to stop them and once they learn each other's spots where each other likes the ball and just all the intricate details that go along with playing basketball together and winning games at a high level they should be able to get that by playoff time with a training camp and a full regular season together and if they can stay healthy this big three should be one of the best in the entire league next year and then even outside of just the big three their all-around roster is very very solid as they have guys like Eric Gordon, Kelly Oubre, sexy ass, Caleb Martin, Kyle Lowry's thick ass, um, Andre Drummond, Reggie Jackson, Jarrett McCain's Yas Queen ass and then even they have guys like Adam Bona you know I mean, obviously, I would have a bonus too if I was on this team with Kylie Oubre. That was retarded. I'm sorry. That was the worst joke ever. But all, with all jokes aside, this supporting cast is extremely solid. Eric Gordon has been on a plethora of good high-level teams. He knows how to be complimentary to people. Kelly Oubre is just a very solid player. Caleb Martin has been very solid. He knows how to win. He was with Miami in those very successful years, so he knows how to 
play winning basketball. Kyle Lowry is a great veteran to have. He's been on championship winning teams. He's been on very high level teams and he's just all around, although far from the old Kyle Lowry of old, he's still a very solid, just nice veteran to have. Uh, Andre Drummond has been on a lot of teams. He's a veteran at this point. He's going to grab rebounds. He knows his role. Uh, Reggie Jackson, he's won a championship with Denver. He plays very good. He knows his role. Jared McCain, I think out of this draft, is actually a very good player, and he's going to be a great sharpshooter for them and maybe even a good offensive spark for them off their bench this year. And I think Jared McCain has a very high ceiling. And then even Adam Bona, who I don't think was going to play too much, I do think is going to be a fairly solid addition if someone like Andre Drummond goes down. He's just a very good depth piece to have. And I just think overall this team is extremely solid, and they could play very well together, and they have all the makings of a high-level playoff team because you can't just have high, top-heavy talent um, like the old Cleveland Cavaliers teams when they have LeBron on them. You have to have full-on good rosters, and that is exactly what this Philadelphia 76ers team has. They have the star talent. They have the depth. They have everything they need. They just have to go out there and actually do it now, which has been very much harder said than done for any Philadelphia 76ers team of the past. And then, even if you kind of look at the entire Eastern Conference as a whole, let's just break it down team by team about teams that are going to really matter in the East next year. The first team is going to be the big one, the Boston Celtics. How do they match up well? Well, if you go best player for best player, you could definitely argue Embiid is better than Tatum, but Tatum's also such a high-level player. Their productivity will probably wash each other out, I would imagine, because they're just both that good. But then Jalen Brown versus guys like Paul George, I would say Paul George is better than Jalen Brown. Now, not by a mile or anything, but I would still say Paul George is a better player. And then I would also say Tyrese Maxey is 100% the better player than Kristaps Porzingis. So I would say with that, just from their big three versus big three, the Philadelphia 76ers have the edge there. But now, obviously, Boston is much more than that. They have an unbelievable team. Derek White, Drew Holiday, their defense is insane. They're great on both ends of the ball. They have experience. They won a championship together. So they have a lot of things going for them as well. And although I would think Boston would be favored in this series, I think Paul George and the 76ers could 100% give them a run for their money and maybe even beat them if all things go right. So although I don't think they will be favored in the series, I do think that they have the parts to potentially beat Boston farther down the line, especially if Boston isn't 100% healthy like they were this year with Christoph Porzingis being in and out of the lineup, especially in the playoffs. And then even the Milwaukee Bucks, I would say the 76ers are just flat out better than the Bucks. So yes, Giannis is probably better than Embiid overall, but not by a lot because Embiid is just that good of a player. So that's kind of a washout type deal. And then I think Embiid's where he plays on defense is going to real heavily impact Giannis. Now, obviously, it hasn't too much in the past, but I do think Embiid is a, a solid matchup for Giannis, especially in the paint on help side defense. And then I think Paul George is better than Damian Lillard at this point in their careers. And I think that their team just fits better than the Bucks. Do. I, Damian Lillard and Giannis and Chris Middleton didn't look good together last year. They just didn't really mix. Um, I think the Philadelphia Sixers are going to mix very well. I think they're more talented than them. And I think they're deeper as well. And I just think overall that the 76ers should be favored in a series with the Milwaukee Bucks and then even the new kind of new dies on the block in the New York Knicks who are officially like a lot of people are putting them in in finals contending category now although I am lower on the Knicks than many teams I still acknowledge they're going to be a very good team next year and I would still have the 76ers above them in a series because now that like band for band Embiid is 100% better than Jalen Brunson um Julius Randle is 100% worse than Paul George and Tyrese Maxey is 100% better than OG Ananobi or McKinney Hill Bridges, whichever one you want to say is their third best player. So I would 100% say 76ers are probably going to be favorited over everybody in the East, especially all the great teams in the East, besides the Boston Celtics, because even the Cleveland Cavaliers, who might be the next best team next year, although I like Cleveland, I like them a lot, I do think that the Philadelphia 76ers just have so much talent. They have more of the upper echelon talent on their roster than Cavs do, and I think overall that would be enough to push them over the edge. So I do think for sure the 76ers have every right, every tool, every Everything necessary for them to make a deep playoff run this year and it is 100% up to them. They have to stay healthy, they have to mesh well, and they have to learn how to play together. And if they can do all three of those things, they should legitimately have a chance to at least make the conference finals for the first time in this now seven year, going on eight years if they make the playoffs the next year, which they should stretch. They should finally be able to get past the second round and really give this city hope and at least something to root for above a second round exit, okay? So hopefully the 76ers are finally ready to do it. They can finally do it. I think this is the best team they've had in a very long time, and I'm pretty high on them as well. But unfortunately, you guys, that's me for this video. So come below. Do you agree with me? Do you think the 76ers are ready to win? How far do you think they can go? Who do you think is going to win the finals? Are your thoughts in the comment section below? And don't point to the like button, subscribe, and that's the word to me. And I hope you have a blessed day because I had a blessed day. So you need a blessed day. All glory to God. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah, blah.